you know, it's really, it's really interesting because uh, I would not consider myself a public artist. Um, in many ways, to make a work outside and to, to consider um, communities of people who will see the work in passing from the road or uh, who might try to come close to the monument. Uh, this kind of work of a public artist feels in some ways very, very different from a studio practitioner, a person who's used to making things that are made inside museums or smaller. But if I could remove the scale, um, when, when the opportunity came for me to consider this site at the Parish Museum, uh, it was coming at the same time that uh, the city of Chicago was still experiencing lots of looting. Um, friends of mine who had really great jobs were experiencing unemployment for the first time in their careers. Um, the racial tension uh, between haves and have-nots in my city was coming to uh, a real uh, moment of eruption and young people were leaving the west side and the south side of Chicago to go into downtown to protests. And then we started to see that our country was turning very quickly into a militarized state. And all those things are happening at the time that I'm being asked to make something, you know, pretty or something that could, um, could grab, grab the hearts and minds of people in the Hamptons, you know? And, it, and it, in those moments, it's a very tricky calculus to try to figure out how do you, how do you acknowledge the truth of the place that I've embedded myself and then, which I think needs art and beauty, and then the truth of other places in the world that in some ways, People are protected from COVID-19 because there's lots of air, there's lots of space. People have big homes. So I was trying to figure out this calculus. Of what could I say that is uh, a tribute to, the, to my truth, but might also function as a kind of tribute to those that should hear truths? I'm not particularly political in my artistic work, although sometimes history has a way of being political on its own. I'm not afraid of truth. And so this piece, uh, in some ways it's an admission that like, I don't have a heroic thing to say and I don't really know a whole lot of heroes. Uh, the heroes that I know are people who would never be important enough to deserve a monument. They're people for whom we'd never know them enough because their stories weren't recorded in history. They were made differently. I'll admit that I'm a bit romantic about history, but I imagine the makeup of a woman or a man, the things that guided our hearts, the ambitions that we had, the willingnesses we had all seemed a bit more about others than today. Even today, selflessness has value. People can like uh, create currency around their altruism. A software company can say, for the love of America, we're gonna give away our software knowing full well that by giving away the software, they'll make billions in advertising fees and so and so. That if you're an actor or a celebrity or a public figure, you know that you need to be tied to a cause because in being tied to a cause, uh, you'll get more likes on Instagram. It's hip to be a social practitioner. So I wondered what to give place that seems like it has everything. And I decided to give a monument with no monument, a plinth in waiting, stone, a set of 
uh, potential amplifiers so that one day when we're ready, one day when we have heroes, men and women and others, we have heroes, there'll be a stone for them. So I imagine then, you know, kind of the theory of public art that by not having a strong man with whiskers on a horse on top of the plinth, that it would make room for the seven-year-old that might imagine herself as hero, that uh, lovers would come late at night to the parish museum and put themselves on there and imagine themselves as heroes, that everyday people who are unnamed, who are doing great things, who know in their heart they want to do things, not for their Instagram likes, uh, but because uh, they really are invested in others, that they could put themselves up there, take a picture, be a hero, and that the stone would remind them that they too are etched into the future, etched into the present. It's interesting that this stone was coming from another uh, museum garden. The stone is from the Walker Art Center. And as I was making a permanent work, or seemingly permanent, the former permanent garden was going away and this stone was available. So it also feels good to take the stone from one museum institution that had a Herzog and Nimrod construction right behind it and put it in another institution that has that same uh, powerful architecture. In that sense, I guess it feels a little bit site specific. Granted, it's cool because the rain won't hurt it and kids climbing on it won't hurt it. But it's also cool because it, it seems to live forever. And so I hope that for as long as this piece is at uh, the Parish Museum, that we would imagine the future of possible heroes um, guiding our lives. And maybe instead of the lone individual who has the capacity to aid, we would imagine that there is a collective possibility and we no longer need heroes the way we did uh, monopolists uh, and industrialists and singular capitalists that we would realize that we actually need each other in order to do great things. Thanks very much. Perfect.